Uh, the Quran teaches when you meet or fight those who disbelieve, strike at their necks till when you have killed and wounded many of them. You're supposed to kill the heretics if they don't believe in, in the Quran and Allah. I'm going to go and read the whole verse out. It says, Therefore, when ye meet the unbelievers in fight, smite at their necks at length. When ye have thoroughly subdued, subdued them, bind a bond firmly on them. Thereafter is the time either for generosity or ransom until the war lays down its burdens. Thus are ye commanded, but if it had been Allah's wills, he could certainly have exacted retribution from them himself, but he lets you fight in order to test you, some with others, but those who are slain in the way of Allah, he will never let their deeds be lost. So basically this is in the context of a war. Obviously a general is not going to say, oh go out and have fun, no he's, he's going to try and raise your morals and make sure you win the battle. I think uh, chapter 2 verse 190 best sums up the Islamic position on fighting wars. Uh, so chapter 2 verse 190 it says fight in the way of Allah against those who fight you, uh, fight against you but begin not hostilities. Lo Allah loves not aggressors. So I hope that clears that up. There's a great book called Who Is This Allah by Moshe. We sell it in our bookstore. The they say, the Quran says, the last hour will not come before the Muslims fight the Jews and the Muslims kill them. Again, uh, Kent's taking everything out of context. This is referring to the end of the days when the Antichrist appears. And now what I've done is I've placed a link in uh, the description box to a lecture about the Antichrist by Dr. Bilal Phillips. You've probably already seen it, but it's there just in case you haven't. That explains uh, what this hadith means. And he does a far better job than I ever could. The Adu uh, Harari, the prophet said, Allah created Adam, making him 60 cubits tall. That's 90 feet. Okay, I'll go ahead and read the whole hadith out to you. So it's uh, Sahih Muslim, volume 4, book 55, uh, hadith number uh, 553. So it's narrated by Abu Huraira. And it says, the prophet peace be upon him said Allah created Adam making him 60 cubits tall when he created him he said to him go and greet that group of angels and listen to their reply for it will be your greeting and the greeting of your offspring so Adam said to the angels assalamu alaikum i.e. peace be upon you the angel said assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi uh, peace and Allah's mercy be upon uh, mercy be upon you. Thus the angels added to Adam's salutation the expression wa rahmatullahi. Any person who will enter paradise will resemble Adam in appearance and figure. People have been decreasing in stature since Adam's creation. Okay, so the key word in that hadith was any person who will enter paradise. Now, in the complete wording, the word used is fi al sama meaning uh, in the heaven so this is not referring to uh, the size of humans on earth this is referring to us in heaven the third sir verse 105 and 106 says in the great and final day of redemption only white faces will be saved all blackened faces will be condemned this is what they teach okay okay Kent's trying to uh, imply something uh, ridiculous here that the Islamic religion is racist uh, okay this uh, verse chapter 3 verse 106 is referring to uh, the day of judgment so the verse basically reads not as Kent's written it but this is how it actually reads uh, in the use of Ali translation it says on the day when some faces will be lit up with white and some faces will be in the gloom of black to those whose faces will be black will be said did he reject faith after accepting it taste then the penalty of rejecting faith so you can clearly see that it doesn't literally mean uh, Caucasians will, will go to heaven and uh, black people will go to hell. No, it means uh, lit up with white. Those that are happy and those uh, that uh, are gloomy will, uh, will be black uh, in terms of that sense, not literally colours. Uh, I think Kent needs to do a little bit more homework and he'll find out that in the Prophet's last sermon, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, All mankind is from Adam and Eve. No, an Arab has no superiority over a non-Arab, and a non-Arab has any superiority over an Arab. 
Also, a white has no superiority over a black, nor a black has any superiority over white except by piety and good action. They say, men, marry as many women as you like, one, two, three, or four. Under Islam, you can have up to four wives at a time, uh, and if you want to you have temporary marriages, you can get married for 15 minutes. That's pornography is what it is. Okay, it's perverted. Chapter 4. Uh, verse 3 uh, but he only quotes uh, marry women of your choice 2, 3 or 4 but if you read further on you find but if ye fear that ye shall not be able to deal justly with them then only one and the Quran is the only scripture that says you can only marry one the other scriptures don't mention how many women you can marry we believe uh, the Bible says Solomon had uh, almost a thousand wives Abraham had two wives, uh, David had many wives, so to pull Muslims up on that is basically very hypocritical. Again, I can go on about the benefits of polygamy and so forth and why it was allowed in Islam, uh, but instead I'll post a link to another lecture about polygamy and they'll do a better job than I ever will. Okay, Kent is trying to mislead us again. Temporal marriages were allowed in Islam early on. I mean, we have to look at this uh, in a historical perspective as well. Before the advent of Islam, people were just uh, sleeping around with any women that they wanted. By uh, making sure people got married, even if it was for temporarily, it was slowly uh, decreasing that habit. But at the end, uh, temporal marriages were banned. And we know that from uh, Sahih Bukhari, volume number 7, book 62, number 52, uh, narrated by uh, bin Abdullah and uh, Salama bin Al-Aqwa. Uh, and, uh, and the hadith reads, While we were in an army, Allah's apostle came to us and said, You have been allowed to do the mutta, marriage, so do it. Salama bin Aqwa said, Allah's apostle said, If a man and a woman agree to marry temporarily, their marriage will last for three nights and if they like to continue they can do so and if they won't, won't want to separate they can do so I do not know whether that was only for us or for all the people in general Abu Abdullah al-Bukhari said Ali made it clear that the Prophet said the mutta marriage has been cancelled made unlawful right so I mean you look at the abrogation of alcohol in, in Islam Allah didn't say straight away, right, no alcohol. It was slowly introduced and that's what's happened here. Uh, if you try to get rid of fornication and adultery that we have in Western society, you wouldn't be able to do it because you need taqwa and you need steps uh, such as Allah has shown and provided. And as far as pornography goes, I can quote you a, a long list uh, of verses from the Bible but I'm not going to stoop to the level where Kent is currently at